Hello there, this is Luminous Star. Welcome to the channel. Everyone who's a current subscriber, mwah, thank you guys and gals so much for being my stars. Thank you for inspiring me and keeping me passionate about keeping Luminous Star channel active. As you can see, our channel is growing, our family is growing, our community is growing. We are keeping people aware of narcissistic abuse. I wanna thank you all so much for sharing your stories because you inspire me to continue to share mine. Everyone who's watching for the first time, welcome to Luminous Star Channel. Why don't you scroll down and select the subscription button below if you haven't already. <laughs> welcome to the Luminous Star family. Everyone who's visiting for the first time also, don't forget to hit the notification bell. That way, when every video comes out, you'll be the first Today's to know. video, shenanigans continue after scapegoated family members leave narcissistic parents. Please don't forget to like and or share this video. Check the description box below for further details. And while you're here, I want to go ahead and thank you for your time in advance. And of course, I wish you the very best. First point, scapegoated children of narcissistic parents often grow up groomed to sacrifice themselves for those who have predatory natures, such as cluster B personalities and those who demonstrate abusive behaviors. Next point. Very often, it takes a change in thought and or behavior patterns in order for those who have been scapegoated by narcissistic family members to choose to thrive forward past narcissistic abuse. So most of the time, it's going to take a change in thought, not just in behavior, in order for us to continue to thrive forward. Now, I've mentioned this in other videos that it's going to take it to be a lifestyle. What am I talking about? Once a person goes no contact, if he or she chooses to, they're going to make it a part of their lifestyle to maintain thriving forward. That means continuing to be no contact. It's a part of a lifestyle. Now, this may sound tedious to some people. It may even sound overwhelming, but taken from a person who has gone no contact from certain individuals in my family, not everyone, okay? Now, this is something that I know personally is a game changer. So once you make that decision to go no contact, you're going to have to maintain focusing on your own life, which means this is gonna be a lifestyle. It's not gonna be so overwhelming after a little while. At first it may be, but after you get to hang of it, after you start putting one foot in front of the other and continuing to thrive forward, you will be well on your way of making this a lifestyle and it won't feel so tedious okay next point throughout years of narcissistic abuse those who have experienced it firsthand since his or her childhood have become very knowledgeable of various diabolical shenanigans pulled by the narcissist within their dysfunctional next family point. once adult children of narcissistic parents choose to take positive action in order to reclaim his or her personal power the game is then changed in their favor it is at this time that some individuals will choose to go no contact, leaving their narcissistic parents behind for good. Now, as I mentioned before, nine times out of 10 chances, once a person chooses to go no contact, this will become a part of his or her lifestyle. Again, this may sound overwhelming, but it is not once you start to place one foot in front of the other. Okay, so at first one may go through anxiety or actually their anxiety may increase. This is very common. This is natural because when you are shifting the gears, that means there's a change that's happening. Therefore, this may cause a little bit of a stress to start to form or increase. You're already probably up under a lot of emotional stress by being in a dysfunctional relationship with the narcissist. Once you change that, it is very natural for stress levels to go up a little bit, meaning the anxiety levels may also go up. So one may start to doubt that they made the right decision to go no contact. Take it from a person who's done this. This is natural. Don't let this have you go back into a narcissistic abusive situation. Okay, because it's probably going to end up being worse than better if you reconnect to dysfunctional families who have a narcissist in the family. Okay, 
It's not going to be better. It may end up being worse. Now, I'm not sharing this with you all to discourage you from going no contact if this is something you are contemplating. The reason why I'm sharing this with you is because I have gone through this. Okay, so it's not going to be very easy at first. But as I stated, as you place one foot in front of the other, you will get the hang of it. You will get the gist of it. And it will become more natural to you to reclaim your personal power. Meaning, going no contact has become a part of your lifestyle that's going to feel very right and natural to you. Next point. However, the shenanigans, narcissistic supply tactics, and diabolical acts of narcissistic parents in order to maintain their false self-image may continue, if not escalate. After going no contact, it is very common for narcissistic parents to select other family members, such as the golden child, to scapegoat in place of the original scapegoated family member. Okay, this is another thing that's very common. If you should decide to go no contact, do not be surprised that another family member who has been selected as the golden child to then become the scapegoat, okay? After you have gone no contact, do not be shocked by that. Some people, you know, I've heard the testimonies, you know, some people are shocked by this, but then there are some people who are not, okay? So this is something that is going to probably happen. When you think about it, every dysfunctional family who has a narcissistic parent or a person who has a custody personality, okay, who's running the family or who's the head of the family, they need to have a scapegoat in order for their false self image to survive. Just think about that. So after you go no contact, what do you, okay, what do you think is going to happen? One of the things that's going to happen is that there needs to be a scapegoat who's going to take your place, okay? So this may sound a little bit uh, you know unfair to some of you some of you may be thinking and feeling well, okay, how sad right because you've gone through this You've gone through it. You've experienced it and as I stated before I know something about going no contact and how that feels All right, so don't be so surprised that some narcissistic parents will increase their diabolical uh, acts they will increase the shenanigans they will increase the crazy making don't be surprised after you go no contact that this will happen. Remember, they have a false self-image to maintain. In order to do that, they have to have someone who will provide them the narcissistic supply. And within a dysfunctional family, it is usually the scapegoated family member. Okay, so don't be so surprised after going no contact that things get a little bit crazier for a while. Right? But I want to encourage you to maintain focus and thriving forward when this happens. Next point. There are some family members who begin to wake up and realize the horrors of being scapegoated by his or her narcissistic parents, especially after years of being showered with their own narcissistic supply, while being encouraged to scapegoat the original scapegoated family member. Okay, this is another thing that's very horrible in my opinion, yet is quite family member who is often the golden child okay they wake up a little bit you know just a, a little bit sometimes it takes a long period of time but they will usually not all the time but they will usually wake up and find out what the other family member who has been scapegoated for a long period of time has been going through because now they're on the scapegoated hot seat so they get a taste of what that experience was for you if you were the one who was scapegoated in your family, all right, they get a little taste of that. This does not necessarily mean they will then become all chummy with you and reach out to you with a lot of love, okay? I just want to make that clear. This does not mean that's going to happen. It means that even if they wake up and realize what you have gone through, this does not mean he or she is going to change. They may continue to be the golden child. The only thing is what's different is that now they're just scapegoated as well. Okay, there's information out there about this. Some who have been golden children for a long period of time and they have enjoyed that, okay? Because they joined in the, in the mob of having you be the scapegoated family member. Okay, they joined in. So now they're on the scapegoated hot seat and they get to find out what that feels like. I wanna make this very clear. 
This does not mean they're going to hang up their golden child hat. Doesn't mean that. More than likely, they may dig in even more. They may become more relentless as the golden child. Okay? Just to retaliate against now being the scapegoated uh, family member. More than likely, they're going to resent this. Now, as I stated, this does not mean they're going to open up and be all lovey-dovey with you. If anything, they may become more resentful because you have gone no contact. Do not let this discourage you from reclaiming your personal okay, power. Okay, so going no contact is not easy. The last thing you're going to need is somebody telling you to come back into a dysfunctional family. But this is often what happens because the flying monkeys come out the woodwork. The enablers, they start coming up to you and bringing the narcissistic family member or the narcissistic parents into the conversation, trying to get you to become more guilty or feel more guilty about going no contact. I want to encourage, especially my stars once again, to stay focused on thriving forward. It's not going to be that easy, but it will be well worth it if you stay the course. Let's move forward. The shenanigan saga continues as long as narcissistic parents have a very strong sense of entitlement cocktail with a twist of self-righteousness that could even possibly knock an entire clergy out cold. Okay, let's think about this for a minute. The shenanigans usually do not stop. When a person goes no contact from a dysfunctional family with a narcissist, okay, this is, I mean, think about it. Their false self-image must survive and thrive. Like one who has a predatory nature, such as the narcissist, they're going to immediately look around for a replacement. Either that, or they're going to try to bring you back in as the one who was scapegoated. They have to see the main focal point for the narcissist is their false self-image. So they're not going to hesitate to try to pull all types of shenanigans in order to maintain their false self image. They're not gonna hesitate. This is about survival, period. And as a hunter, as a predator, the narcissist, again, will stop at nothing. They will pull all types of shenanigans. They must survive. That false self image must survive. They are addicted and obsessed with keeping that false self image alive. They don't care about family. They don't care about that. It's all about the false self-image. So don't expect the shenanigans to stop just because you've gone no contact. Matter of fact, I want to encourage all of you who may be contemplating going no contact not to think about this so much. Try not to think about it so much. Listen to more music. Do more things that you enjoy. Shift your mind to something else more positive. Envision yourself going no contact and becoming wealthier, becoming healthier. Do whatever you have to do that's positive and constructive to keep your mind focused on going no contact. This is your life. This is about you maintaining your overall well-being, right? This is what it, this is about, or part of it anyway. See, this is the bottom line. When this happens, ask yourself, are you able to maintain being focused? So that way you can continue to thrive forward. Are you willing to do what it takes to thrive forward? Of course, something that is positive and constructive. Some people will not be happy about your thriving forward. I'm just going to forewarn you. However, take steps and try not to allow this to deter you or discourage you from thriving forward, especially if everything in you is screaming, go no contact, thrive forward, reclaim your personal power. It only power. means that you're being called to do something that is so natural, and that is to maintain your overall well-being as a human being on this planet. So try not to be discouraged just because you may be thinking that something will just go haywire after you've gone no this contact. This is something that the narcissist wants you to do. He or she is hoping that you will feel so guilty that you will not take any radical action whatsoever. So don't be worried about the shenanigans saga continuing. All right, the next chapter, just make sure you're not in that chapter. 
Let's move forward. Long after the adult child of narcissistic parents goes no contact, the narcissistic family members, along with family members who are the narcissist enablers, may continue to lack sympathy and or empathy for him or her. As I stated before, don't expect other people in your family to open their arms up and support you and, and just see that you have gone through something that possibly has left you traumatized. Okay, it has been such a grievance to you. Don't expect certain family members to show sympathy or even empathy because some of them may have custody personalities. Okay, this is something else that's very common that happens when a person contemplates going no contact from a dysfunctional family that has narcissistic parents. Very common that this happens. Other family members will conspire and they will join in on trying to get you to come back into the fold. Don't be shocked by that. Continue to thrive forward and stay focused on what you need to do in order to maintain your overall well-being. Okay, and of course I wish you the very best with that. Let's move forward. It is very common that the family of the scapegoated family member does not reach out in support of his or her efforts to thrive forward past narcissistic abuse. Many family members tend to remain in denial of the horrific after effects of narcissistic abuse with any dysfunctional family dynamic. Very common, very sad, but very, very true. All right, now this is something that some of us have experienced. And that is once going no contact, there are certain family members that will continue to be in denial. There are certain family members who will continue to be in denial about some of the narcissistic abuse, dysfunctional behaviors, toxic behaviors, whatever your situation is, okay, because it varies from person to person. Not everyone who's watching this video has a dysfunctional family who has a narcissistic parent. Some of you have cousins, uncles, aunts, grandparents who were the narcissist, not necessarily your Do parents. Do not be shocked that after you go no contact, that you have even, it looks like it's even less family members who seem to care. All right, don't be shocked by that. Actually, when some of us think about it, it would be a fair statement to make if we were to say that a lot of our family members are emotional bullies. Just from personal experience, I can tell you, there's gonna be a range of emotions that you will feel as you're contemplating going no contact. Now, for some of you, going no contact is not feasible, it's not practical right now because of your certain uh, situation or your circumstances. Most of the time when people go no contact or they contemplate going no contact from a dysfunctional family with a narcissist in it, it's a gradual process. So just speaking from personal experience, I already know you're going to go through a wide range of emotions. Sometimes you may feel more stressed. Your anxiety levels may go up. I know I mentioned this, but I want to reiterate that because some people, they jump out there, they go no contact, and they have not planned nor strategized going no contact. Let's move forward. First tool, plan and strategize going no contact. If you are contemplating thriving forward past narcissistic abuse, dysfunctional family, and or childhood trauma, just as I mentioned before, plan and strategize. It is a game changer. This is one that I did. Plan and strategize, very important, because if you just jump out there, it is a very good chance that you're going to reconnect. Because a narcissistic parent, for instance, and for example, they may feel that you betrayed them after they have done such things, right? So don't be surprised that they're going to behave and act as if you committed the worst crime ever by going no contact. So now that there's been reconnection, they're going to make up for lost time. I hate to put it that way, but some of you already understand exactly what I'm saying here. Second tool, discontinue to wear those rose-colored glasses, whereas the narcissist and or cluster personality is concerned. By continuing to idealize a dysfunctional family means that there remains compliance or co-signing the shenanigans of the dysfunctional family ran by the narcissist. Okay, so when a person has the rose-colored glasses on, they're idealizing their dysfunctional family. They're idealizing 
who the narcissistic parents are. Or, you know, because they start thinking, well, they are my parents. They ought to behave this way and that way. Okay, I get it. At the same time, we have to face reality. So by continuing to keep those rose-colored glasses on, that means that there are some idealizations going on. And not only that, that means that the person is complying or they're co-signing to all of the shenanigans and the crazy making and the narcissistic diabolical tactics. Okay, that they're 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 going for it. They're co-signing it. They're relaxed in it. They're comfortable with it. They're in the sunken place. This is what this means. It means that this person has pretty much given up on his or herself. They're not even fighting for their life. They're not fighting to reclaim their personal power at all. They have given up. Okay? Let's move forward. Practice self-preservation, emotional discipline, assertion, and personal boundaries. This will take some time to accomplish. With practice, with patience and practice, it may become more natural for one to begin to incorporate mindfulness as part of his or her support base. This is one that I know a lot about personally. All right, once I began to practice mindfulness, and you can look this up on Google. Uh, you can look this up. You can go to a library, get plenty of books on mindfulness. It is a game changer. Once you incorporate that into your lifestyle, again, you will see some changes for the positive, for the better. This is going to take some time to accomplish because it takes patience as well as practice. When a person is focused on their thriving forward, and healing process, it's not a contest. This is your life here. You've gone through quite an or you've gone through quite an ordeal, more than likely. So don't think that this is going to be overnight. No, the changes will not come overnight. The effect of narcissistic abuse did not take overnight to take full effect. It took some time. So this means once you go no contact, you focused on your own. A uh, healing process is going to take patience and time. It's going to take practice. This is not a contest. This is going to become a part of your lifestyle that you have to come to peace with. Some people are not comfortable with this. And from personal experience, again, I know something about this. At first, I was very angry. I didn't want to talk to anybody about this. I was pissed off. Asking a lot of questions. Why me? Why did I go through this? What was the purpose of this? However, I don't want to get too far off track. So I just want to say that once I started to practice mindfulness, it was a game changer. Okay, so don't expect things to happen overnight. Next tool, final tool. Remember that your life has purpose. Absolutely. You are not a bad person for reclaiming your life and personal power back from the narcissist. Surely your purpose is not to be narcissistic supply for all of your existence. Now just think about that for a minute. You're on this planet. You're alive. Okay? Some of you, your circumstances, your situations may not be that, you know, may not be that, that good. However, you're alive. You exist. You're here. Your life has purpose. You're not a bad person for reclaiming your life and personal power. Why is that? That doesn't make you a bad... The only people who think that you're being a bad person is people who have taken advantage of your being the scapegoat in the family. There I said it. Those are the only people that's not going to be on board and they're not going to be supportive of you going no contact and reclaiming your personal power. They're not going to be on board for it. They're going to speak against it. And as I stated before, don't be surprised if there are more family members that seemingly come out of the woodwork who will come inspire to have you return back onto the scapegoated house. You have to remember the narcissist and those who have a closing personality, they must have the narcissistic supply by any means necessary. That means they don't care who is on the scapegoat hot seat. They don't care. It's all about that false self image, thriving and surviving. And since we're talking about a dysfunctional family, that means that the dysfunctional family must be preserved. And how is that going to happen? Unless the narcissist is alive and well and thriving and surviving via their false self-image, via their getting their narcissistic supply. They're here. They exist. They want to continue 
to exist. They want to, and, and if after they're gone, right, they want another narcissist to sprout in their place. Why do you think they select a golden child, not just a scapegoat? This is about going from one generation to the next. Now, I know I sound all fired up and passionate because I am <laughs> about this. I hear the testimonies. I've met people personally who have gone through a lot of horrible things at the, the hands of their own dysfunctional families with a narcissist in it. Okay, so remember, your life has purpose. You are not a bad person for reclaiming your life and your personal power. You're here on this planet for a reason, just like the narcissist is. Every life has purpose. Why do you think, why would you exclude yourself Surely your purpose is not to be narcissistic supply for all of your existence. For a few years, you were narcissistic supply. Okay, is that supposed to be your entire existence? You don't know how long you have. This is what sobered me up when I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I don't know how long I have on this planet. But my goodness, it is not supposed to be narcissistic supply all of my existence. That's not my purpose. Figure out what your purpose is today. The first statement you can make to answer that question, what is your purpose? Is that my life has purpose. Boom, there's your answer. References and resources. Please check out the description box below as I mentioned for further details to this video. The references and resources are there. Just take a few minutes out and please look over these references and resources. You may find these to be very helpful. I'm Luminous Star. I want to thank everyone for joining me today or tonight, wherever you may be. Of course, I wish you the very best. Continue to watch. Stay tuned for more videos. Stay tuned for more vlogs.